In this video, we're going to talk about finding parameters of transformed random variables. So basically, we're going to use a random variable that exists and create a new one. So one way we can create a new random variable y is by adding a constant c to an existing random variable x. So y will be x plus c. So then the PDF of y is basically the same as the PDF of x. So in other words, the probability that y equals k plus c is the same as the probability that x equals k. So the question is, how do the mean, median, mode, variance, and standard deviation of y compare to the corresponding measures for x? See if you can think about this and uh, come up with answers. And hint, it's pretty much like the same transformation effect affected a data set. Well, it turns out that the mode of y is the mode of x plus c. The median of y is the median of x plus c. The mean of y is the mean of x plus c. So all those measures of central tendency are just shifted by adding the constant c. But it turns out to have no effect on the variance or the standard deviation. So the variance of y and the variance of x are the same thing. We saw this before with data sets. Uh, if you think about the mode, the mode, remember, is the one with the highest bar. Every single y value is just the same as, as a corresponding x value, with, with but, but added to c to it, but it doesn't change the height of the bar. So the bar with the highest bar, the, the y value with the highest bar, will be the old x value with the highest bar plus c. And similarly, the median is going to just be added c to it and the same as for the mean of variance. I'm actually going to prove using the formulas uh, the, the results for mean and variance here. So the mean of x plus c is the expected value of x plus c which is the sum of all x's of x plus c times the PDF of the x's. We can distribute this and this becomes x times PDF of x plus the PDF of x and then we can split that into two uh, sum. So we have this sum here and this sum here. Now this first sum you may recognize is just the expected value of x, in other words the mean of x. The second part you can factor the c out front using the distributive property and then when you sum up all the values of the PDF you always get 1. So 1 times c is c and sure enough you get mu of x plus c. Or another way of saying it is the expected value of x plus a constant is the expected value of x plus that constant. Now, on the variance, though, we're going to see that it turns out to have no effect. So the this sigma square of x plus c is the expected value of x plus c minus the mu of x plus c squared. Well, the mu of x plus c is mu of x plus c, as we just saw. Distribute the minus here, and you've got x plus c minus mu of x minus c, the whole thing squared, and then take the expected value of that. Well, notice that the c's cancel out at that level, so you just have the expected value of x minus mu of x squared, which is exactly what is meant by the variance of x. So the variance of x plus c is the variance of x, and of course if that's true, they have the same square roots, so the standard deviation of x plus c is the same as the standard deviation of x. So that proves it formally. So let's put it to work in a uh, word problem here, a real, a real world application. So suppose that X represents the monthly income for an insurance company per $1,000 of term life insurance. We're told that the mean value of X is $15 with a standard deviation of $12. Now suppose that the insurance company raises the price of insurance by $2 for every, every $1,000 of coverage. What's the new expected monthly income per $1,000 of coverage, and what's the new standard deviation? Work this out. When you got it done, come back and check. Press pause now. Well, hopefully you could do this pretty quickly. The new mean is the old mean plus the shift of 2, so it's 15 plus 2 is $17. And the new standard deviation is the same as the old standard deviation of $12. It doesn't change. So just shifting it does not change the spread, but it does change the center. Now, what if we multiply uh, an existing random variable x by a constant c to get our new random variable y? So y is c times x. And again, the same, basically the same probability there. Um, probabilities are based on the probabilities of x. 
So how do the mean, median, mode, and variance and standard deviation of y compare to the corresponding measures for x in this case? Okay, think about that one and come back when you think you have an answer. Press pause. Well, it actually turns out that the mode, median, and mean are all just multiplied by c. Every single value is multiplied by c, so that includes the bar that's the highest. So, um, so the x value of the bar with the highest to begin with is the mode of x. Multiply that by c to get the mode of y. The one that's in the middle in the ranked list, or so that 50% is below it, half is below it, is the median for x. All the things have been multiplied by C. It'll still, that doesn't change the order of any of the data. And so, uh, well, it doesn't change the order as long as the, uh, the C is a positive number at least. Uh, if if uh, C is a negative number, I guess that would change, that would reverse the order, but it'd still be the same one in the middle. So C times that number would be the median. The mean, uh, again, is, is C times that, and we're going to actually prove that with the formula here in just a second. The variance turns out to be multiplied by c squared, which means the standard deviation is the absolute value of c times the old standard deviation. So these last three I'll, I'll actually prove here on this slide here. So the mean of c times x is the expected value of c times x. That means you take the c times x, multiply it by the PDF of x, and add it up for all different x values. Well, this c is a constant, so it can be factored out. Every one of these has a c times it, so we can pull it out front using the distributed property factoring. What's left is just expected A of x, which is the mu of x, uh, times the c in front. So the mu of c times x is c times mu of x, just what you expect it to be. And the variance here, the variance of c times x is c times x minus mu of c times x quantity squared. Mu of c times x we just saw was c times mu of x. And we can factor a c out of this and then square it becomes c squared and then the x minus mu of x squared. As we, we've just seen with the expected value of a c times some function, that's, that can be brought out front because it is, which would take us directly to this one down here, uh, but we can see it directly here in the definition. It's c squared times x minus mu of x squared times the PDF of x and sum it for all x's. But now the c squared is a constant can be factored out. And what's left there is the expected value of x minus mu squared, again, times the c squared in front. So what's that expected value is this the variance of x. So we see that the variance of cx is c squared times the variance of x. So when you take the square root of c squared, you get the absolute value of c. And so the standard deviation of Cx is the absolute value of C times the, the standard deviation of X. So if C is a positive number, uh, basically C is just multiplied by all of them except for the variance, which is multiplied by C squared. So let's put that into work for us here. Suppose that X represents the monthly income for an insurance company per $1,000 of term life insurance. We're told the mean value of X is $15 with a standard deviation of $12. Now suppose that the insurance company doubles the price of insurance per $1,000 of coverage. What's the new expected monthly income per $1,000 of coverage and what's the new standard deviation? Well, uh, basically they're both doubled So from before. So we were at $15 on average uh, and now we're at 30 twice that. And, but also it got more variable as well. The variability doubled as well. So that goes up to $24 because that's twice 12. Now another way that we can put two random variables together to get a new one is to just add them together. So we'll let a new random variable z be the sum of two existing random variables x and y. And we want to see how the mean variance and standard deviation of z compared to the corresponding measures for x and y. And it turns out that um, kind of like we saw with, with adding a constant, the expected value of x plus y, uh, which is mu of x plus y, is expected value of x plus expected value of y. Um, and so that is the expected value of x uh, plus expected value of y is mu of x plus mu of y. So 
if two things are have we just have their means or averages we just add them add those averages together those means together to get the mean of the uh, the sum now it's a little more complicated however for variance and let's take a look what happens here and so remember that the variance of a random variable is that random variable minus mean minus its mean quantity squared and then take the expected value so that's x plus y minus mu of x plus y squared but mu of x plus y is mu of x plus mu of y as we just saw now I'm going to distribute the minus and regroup and put the x with the minus mu of x and the y with the minus mu of y and then I want to square that so that brings us to this line right here x minus mu of x plus y minus mu of y quantity squared so this is like a plus b squared remember when you have a plus b squared you got a squared plus b squared but you also get 2ab so think of like foil there uh, the, for the distributive property uh, the f is this the l is here and the o and the i are both these two pro the product here now we've already seen that the expected value of sum is the sum of the expected values so that's the expected value of the first part plus expected value of the second part plus expected value of the third part and we've already seen that we can take a, a constant like the two that was in here pull it out front of the expected value now this first part is just the variance of the x's the second part is the variance of the y's but this but then you get this extra term and it's this extra term where we have the two but then this expected value here of x minus mu of x times y minus mu of y we call that the covariance of x and y so the variance of x plus y turns out to be the variance of x plus the variance of y plus two times this covariance of x and y and of course then the standard deviation is just the square root of that so the covariance is actually turns out to be a measure of the deviation from independence so the covariance of x and y is zero if x and y are independent uh, but but if they're not independent you need to be able to figure out what this expected value is to be able to know what to do with this now let's look at subtracting adding and subtracting and then look at the special case where we have independence so for on the left here we have for any random variables x and y we just saw that mu of x plus y is mu of x plus mu of y the covariance of x and y is the expected value of x minus mu of x times y minus mu of y and so then the variance of x plus y is variance of x plus variance of y plus two times the covariance of x and y or x the, the standard deviation of x plus y is the square root of well the variance that we saw up there if we have x minus y instead of x plus y then it translates pretty nicely the mu of x minus y is mu of x minus mu of y again the same thing for the covariance and the the variance of x minus y is the variance of x plus the variance of y minus two covariance of xy and then square root of that for standard deviation now if x and y are independent we have a special case uh, this part's not special uh, mu of x plus y equals mu of x plus mu of y no matter what but if the x and y are independent the covariance is zero and this term right here goes away and we see that the variance of x plus y is the variance of x plus the variance of y so it works out kind of like you'd hope to expect uh, just just add the two variances together but you need this extra condition that the variables are independent you can just add the means no matter what but you have to add the standard deviations uh, only if they are independent okay a straight zero got rid of there okay now if you're talking about the mean of x minus y it's the mean of x minus the mean of y if they're independent then this term here which is the only one that had the minus in it goes away notice oh, there's another zero get rid of that okay uh, so anyway it turns out that it, the that you get the variance of x minus y is the variance of x plus the variance of y not a minus but a plus there so whether you're adding or subtracting the uh, the x or the x and y the variances are going to be the sum of the old variances at least if it, in the independent case okay so let's use these facts with the independent case 
to do some computations on the next thing. So here we have random variables x and y. We're told the mean of x is 150 and the variance is 9. And the mean of y is 200 with a variance of 16. Find the standard deviation of x and y. And then find the mean variance and standard deviation of the random variable 2x, the random variable y plus 3, and the random variable x plus y. And we're going to assume that x and y are independent, making that last part a little bit easier. Okay. So go ahead and figure this out and come back when you think you have your answers. Press pause now. Well, here are the answers. To do the standard deviation, we just take the square root of the variances. And I made some nice perfect squares here. So square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 16 is 4. When we double x, we're going to double the mean. So 150 goes to 300. We're going to double the standard deviation, which is 6. We end up multiplying the variance by the square of the 2, which is 4. 4 times 9 is 36. So still we see that 6 squared is 36, so the square root of 36 is 6. When we add 3 to y, uh, it just adds 3 to the mean. So it goes from 200 to 203, but there's no change in the variance and standard deviation of y versus y plus 3. When you do x plus y, you just add the means to find the new mean. So 150 and 200 is 350. Uh, but the variances, you're going to you're going to just add them since they're independent here. So 9 plus 16 is 25. Square root of that is 5. How about a real world example? Suppose that at a car dealership, the mean cost of a new car is $26,000 with a standard deviation of $4,000. The mean price paid for a trade-in is $2,000 with a standard deviation of $500. What is the mean and standard deviation of the bottom line net cost of a new car after the trade-in, assuming that the trade-in value is independent of the cost of the new car? So let C be the cost of the new car, T is the value of the trade-in, and B is the bottom line net cost of the car after, you, after you've gotten your trade-in credit. Okay, see if you can figure out the, these things. Press pause now. Well, let's see here. Well, B is C minus T. So notice that the mean calculation does not require the independence assumption, uh, but the standard deviation calculation does require independence of the trade-in value uh, in the new car. Okay, so the mean of our bottom line cost is the mean of the C minus T. So that's the mean of C minus mean of T. 26,000 for the new car on average. On average, you get 2,000 back for your trade-in. So on average, you're going to be paying uh, 24,000, which is the mean bottom line cost. Now, the standard deviation of the bottom line cost is the standard deviation of C minus T, which is, remember, variance is the sum of the variances in the independence case. So the variance of B would be the variance of C plus the variance of T, always plus there, whether you're adding or subtracting the C and T. And then, of course, this is standard deviation, so we got to do the square root of that. So that kind of looks like a sort of like what you get from the Pythagorean theorem, that kind of a relationship. We have to square, add up, and then square root. So this is uh, 4,000 here uh, for the variance, uh, for, the, for the standard deviation for the uh, car cost. So square that to get the variance. 500 squared gets you the variance there. Add them up, square root. This is the square root of 16,250,000. If you'd like reduced radicals, that's 500 times the square root of 65. But we're going to do some at some point, either up here or down here, or somewhere along the line. You're going to put it in a calculator and get a decimal approximation, which is $4,031.13, rounded off to the nearest cent. Uh, probably shouldn't be rounded off that that far uh, that far out. Probably these numbers are are rounded off to begin with, so maybe we should round this off. But I'm going to leave it there for this problem. So that shows you a little bit in this video how we can get some new variables, random variables from old ones, and ha what how that affects some of the parameters that we're dealing with.